Yes, Mother? Hurry up with that potato. I didn't want a whole one. Well, you didn't say. It'll be ruined once I've cut a slice. You can't roll it back in all that dust. Oh, what does it matter? There's plenty more. Plenty more? Your father risked his life for this potato. I mean, there's plenty more in the story. Shh. I thought I heard of him. He's late. But he'll be all right. Yes. Yes, of course he will. Put some more coal on the fire, there's a good girl. I hope your father hasn't been climbing any curtains. I could climb a curtain. Don't be silly. Shouldn't be climbing anything, not at his age. I'm not being silly, I could. I could go borrowing. You don't know what you're saying. You have no idea what it's like upstairs, and thank goodness you don't. Pod. Hello, Vizzy. Ah! You're back, then. Yes? Has your mother been worrying again? I always worry. There's no need, you know. I do know what I'm doing. Most of the time. <coughs> What's that tear in your jacket? Nothing. It's just, um... Oh, it got caught in a piece of pipe. It's nothing. Where? What happened? What have you borrowed? There's something you're not telling me. Oh, it looks so heavy. It is heavy. Look, it's nothing. I'm fine. I knew there was something. I had a feeling. One of those that starts at the knees and starts moving up until... There. Oh, part. It's wonderful. I said I'd get you a watch for your birthday, didn't I? Yes, I know. <laughs> but I didn't think. I mean... I don't know what to say. Do you know where it was? It was wedged down behind the waste pipe in Aunt Sophie's bathroom. <laughs> it must have been there for months. It's beautiful. It's not even my birthday. Oh, fair enough. I'll take it back, shall I? No, no, no. It will be soon. Yes, yeah. I'm just... Just getting your present a little early, that's all. Now, where do you want it? Over here? No, there. Well, maybe a bit to the left. It looks a bit low now I come to look at it. Well, just a minute. What do you think, Ariete? I think it looks wonderful everywhere. You don't think it's hidden by that pipe? No, because if you sit on this chair here, you can see it perfectly well. Yes, that's true. Oh, I don't know. No, you just carry on. I'm fine. It's not heavy at all. Oh, sorry. That's fine. Ariete, hammer and nails. Perhaps it would have been better further on. No, 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 it's fine, really. Couldn't be better. Lovely. The clock for the clock family. Even the overmantles didn't have a clock. Not for all their fancy ways and airs and graces. Nor did the harpsichords come to that. Harpsichords? Where did they live? In the harpsichord. She means where in the house. They were in the morning room. Them upstairs couldn't play a note. So the borrowers were able to live inside, you see. Oh, stuck up lot, those harpsichords. Are they still living in it? No, moved away. As soon as Aunt Sophie took to her bed. 
You see, upstairs had no call to use the room after that, so there was no pickings for the harpsichords anymore. Mrs. Driver and the gardener stick to the kitchen. So they had to emigrate. Like Uncle Hendreary and Aunt Lupi. Yes, that's right. And Cousin Uncle Tina. Poor Uncle Tina. Why? What did happen to her? Well... Soup! Asked again about Egeltina. What did happen to her? Well, she's growing up fast, isn't she? Yes, I know. She can read and write, you know. Learned all that from the books I borrowed for her. You would, too, if you hadn't had to start borrowing so young. Well, this is maybe... She asks so many questions nowadays. And I can't answer most of them, Pod. And the ones I can, I don't want to. It's up to you to tell her about upstairs, Pod. I will, I will. You know I will. I just have to choose my moment, that's all. Ariati, <clears throat> last night you asked a question about why Uncle Hendreary and Aunt Lupi and the cousins had left the house. Yes. Well, it was because your uncle had been seen. Seen? On the drawing room mantelpiece. Oh. Who saw him? The kitchen maid. She dusted him, thinking he was an ornament. Upstairs is full of them. He was standing next to Cupid, and he sneezed. Go on, find the steps. So then what happened? She went berserk. Historical! <laughs> we heard the screech from down here. She was never the same after that. Homily, I was just saying how a human being Never lets it go once a borrower gets seen. That's right. Look everywhere they do. Floorboards go up, traps are set. Poor oh, and worse. But we're the only family left in the house, then. Yes, we are now. <laughs> Mrs. Driver again. Clumsy great thing. Just when I've swept the floor, it's too bad. It really is. Arietti, finish clearing that table. Where did Uncle Hendreary and Aunt Lupi go? They were heading for an abandoned badger's set. On the other side of the world. A couple of fields away, somewhere beyond Parkins Wood. And Eggletina. <coughs> why won't you tell me what happened to her? Questions, always questions. Well, why won't you? Oh, you're too young. No, I'm not. Tell me. Sorry. Now, look what you've done. Sorry. Oh, yes, if you'd been concentrating instead of asking all those silly questions. It was an accident. The cup broke itself, did it? I said I was sorry. Oh, right. Cups enough. are hard enough to come by without your clumsy carelessness. I said I was sorry. What more do you want? I said that's enough. <laughs> Homily, keep calm. I'm perfectly calm. <laughs> I can see. Stop worrying about the blimmin' cup. I'll go straight up to the nursery and borrow another one. <laughs> You've got to be more patient. Don't be so hard on your mother. She only gets like that because she loves you, you know. I'm sorry about the cup. It's all right. Here, dry your eyes. Read your book. 
This is a good go. What is it? I've been seen. Where were you? In the nursery. In the nursery? But there's no one in... There's no one in the nursery, is there? A boy. Oh, no, not a boy. There's no worse human being than a boy. Why did you go? Don't start. It's, it's all right. It's all right. What are we going to do? I don't know. But we're not going to wear me great, are we? Not when I've just got the house so nice. I tripped, dropped the cup, and he caught it. He watched me climb down, gave it to me. Here you are, he said. He spoke to you? Yes, he did. Now, maybe, only maybe, mind, he won't tell anyone. <laughs> we'll know soon enough if he does. And I've heard it said boys are not always believed. So if we lie low, wait and see what happens. Maybe, just maybe, we can stay. Lie low, you mean no more borrowing? Yes, 
Yes, well, we've got enough to live on for a week. How long's he here for? I didn't ask him. There wasn't much time to be social. Shouldn't we tell Arietti? Not yet. Wait. And see what happens. Yes. Wait and see what happens. Oh. You all right? Fine, yes. No, you're not. There's something bothering you. No, there isn't. Yes, there is. You've been acting very strangely lately. Not like your old self at all. I am. Come on, what's the matter? Nothing. Look, there's a blackbird. Yes. And all the trees. I know you're a wonderful borrower. And I know that we've managed to stay when everyone else has gone. But why do we stay? What's it done for us? We're alone in this great, big, half-empty house with no one else to talk to and nothing to see but dust and passages, firelight, candlelight. I want to run in the grass. I want to lie in the sun. And I want to play in the trees like birds do. So did Eggleton. She went outside. But she didn't know that Uncle Henry had been seen. And that because of that, Upstairs had got a cat. A cat? Poor Uncle Tina. It doesn't make any difference. It won't change how I feel. I want to go outside. <laughs> Oh dear, that's the last of the fish bones, isn't it? Mm. Mm. You know, it's been long enough and nothing's happened. I think that boy went off without telling anyone he saw me. And we haven't heard a cat. No. Um, Homily, just suppose there was... You went borrowing again? Well, yes, I've got to do that. No, that's not what I was going to say. Uh, if we'd had a boy, well, I'd be teaching him to borrow now, wouldn't I? Just like my father taught me. Yes, you would, but we've got Arietti. <laughs> yes, I know. Homily, have you ever thought what would happen to her? Well, to both of you, if I couldn't go on borrowing anymore? Oh, don't even think of such a thing. But it will happen, Homily, one day. Won't it? That's why I've got to teach Arietti to borrow. Eight days now since father's been borrowing. Why has he stopped? Blamange! Whoever heard of such a thing? And who does she think she is, expecting me to fetch and carry it like some scullery maid? It's not my place to run errands. No, no, that's right, no. That's how it is with Aunt Sophie. I better be getting the chickens in. I should have put in my notice last May, I should. <laughs> Mrs. Driver's gone out. It's still too much of a risk, Pod. Arietti's got to start one day. Now's as good a time as any. Start what? 
Ariete, take your apron off and get out of those heavy shoes. We need light shoes for borrowing. Borrowing? Just see how you get on, eh? Oh, thank you. Better be the kitchen. Yes, but not for too long. My nerves can't stand it. You worry too much. I know. And now I'll worry twice as much. Well, she'll be perfectly safe with me. Now, what do you need? Well, that brush is very worn. Pod, are you sure? Quite sure. Fibres from the doormat. What else? Sugar and fish bones and pins and tea leaves and uh, currants and breadcrumbs and... Uh... Oh, and we need some more coal and the matches are getting low and... Only if you get the chance. If it's no bother. Ready? Right. right. On with your borrowing bag. That's it. Nice and tight. And I'll bring a spare. Why a spare? Well, I guess we find something extra and the main bag's full. Now, you do what your father tells you to. Yes. Sir. And don't go off by yourself. I won't. We'll see that you don't. I won't. I just... Take care. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. You don't take your eyes off her. Don't worry. Good luck. Father took me. Grandpa was bought. He could borrow anything. Oh, well, anything he could move, and there wasn't much he couldn't. He was so strong, he could lift a serving spoon. Now, always keep this gate open, right? Because you never know when you might want to get home again in a hurry. All right? Nervous? But first time, it's only natural. Stick with me, you'll be all right. Come on. everything. It's so big. Yes. And that is the pendulum. And that other thing is the weight. We're as safe as houses in here. Suppose they moved the clock. They never move clocks like this. They go wrong if you move them. Well, you first.
hurts your hands, doesn't it? Just to begin with. Pull at the loose ones first. Look, you leave it to me. Go and sit by the door and keep a lookout. But I want to be a real borrower. You will be one day. I can do this on my own, really. Go on. <laughs> 